Alice here and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's reading vlog. So I have just finished a very successful run of the Funnel Book Support Group and I'm feeling very motivated to continue. My plans for this week are to continue with Winter's Heart. I made it 242 pages in on the last day of the Reathon and I am very excited to continue on with this. This is the ninth book in the Wheel of Time series and I'm hoping to finish this this week. And then transition right into Crossroads of Twilight, which is book 10. Ideally, I would love if I could finish both of those books this week. And I know they're chunky, but I have faith that I can do it. Another thing I'm going to absolutely focus on is Murder Road. This is by Simone St. James, and it's kind of a spooky kind of thriller mystery. And I've enjoyed two of the books I've read by her. And one of them I haven't enjoyed so much. So I'm very curious to see where this is going to land. It's overdue from the library. I don't have renewals because it is a brand new 14 day book. So I need to read it so that I can bring it back. So this is a very, very high priority and will likely be one of the first things I do this coming week. And then I would like to get back to Sweet because I was reading that before the Funnel Book Support Group, but I put it down again so that I could focus on sequels because I've been reading this for a little bit. I'm on page 138 and it's about a girl who is a chimney sweep and she's an orphan and she ends up finding this magical bit of like soot and ash that turns into a golem and is trying to navigate having a golem for a friend. So those are my main plans for this week. I don't know what else I'm going to read. I have a ton of books on my TBR. It's very overly ambitious. Not that TBR, just the like general books that I need to get to for various reasons like my whodunit TBR, I don't think I've touched anything on. I have my phase out your TBR TBR that I need to get to. I have, of course, my phase 10 TBR. I also have library books that I've got out that I would like to get to. I have my series to continue. And by series to continue, I mean the one that, ones that came out of my TBR jar. But I also have my books that are like the series I want to catch up on or finish in 2024 so I've been trying to incorporate some of those and I definitely have a few of those that I could get to this month so I have a lot of books I would like to get to so that's kind of my main focus because I've got the audiobooks for both of the Wheel of Time books right now so if I could power through them really quickly and get them back off of my TBR that would be great and it would be a giant chunk of pages I need to read Murder Row and I would like to finish Sweep before I completely forget all of the details so those are kind of my main plans. I don't know what else I'm going to do. I really do need to get some filming. I have some book hauls I need to film and I really need to film my book club announcement because that's starting in June and it's May 7th. So I really need to film that in the next couple days so that I can edit it, upload it and give you all like a week to vote on which book you'd like to read so that I can then let you know and have you have at least a few weeks to get a hold of the book for June. So those are kind of my plans for this week. We'll see how it goes. I am very, very tired and would like to kind of curl up and chill, whether I read or not, I don't know, but just, you know, relax, get cozy in bed and start to think about sleep. So I will check back in with you in a couple days and hopefully have finished Winter's Heart and Murder Road and maybe something else we'll see. And yeah, maybe I will also have some updates on videos or editing or something else. I don't know, but hopefully I will see you in a few days and we'll remember to check in this week and have these spoons to check in this week to let you know what I've been up to.
Saturday and I'm checking in. I've had an interesting week so far. I feel like I've got a lot accomplished. Um, and, and you'll see why when I run you through the books that I've read. And of course she's going to come over. I heard her hop to the floors hoping she'd just stay sleeping. But no, we could not have a video without a Sandy. Anywho, um, I read Murder Road and I gave this 3.25 stars. So this is a bit of a thriller. And it follows this couple who is on their way to their honeymoon when they pick up a hitchhiker and realize the hitchhiker is gravely injured, rush her to the hospital, and end up kind of becoming suspects in her death. And I will say it's a really quick read. And it definitely kept me turning the pages, but I felt like some of the stuff was predictable and it was weird and not in the way I necessarily liked, if that makes sense. Um, she's rubbing her face against the desk right underneath the camera. C come back here. So this, it, it was weird and I, I don't know that I necessarily liked the, the way it got weird. But again, it was it was really fast paced. And no, you can't climb on my desk. We've already had this conversation today, Cielo. Um, it was weird in a way I didn't necessarily enjoy. It was fast paced. I think I figured out too many of the like twisty bits to really enjoy it. But it's getting 3.25 stars for keeping me engaged at least all the way throughout it and making me want to stick through to the end. So it wasn't my favorite book by Simone St. James, but it certainly wasn't my least favorite book by her. Then I read Winter's Heart and I gave this 3.25 stars. This is the ninth book in the Wheel of Time series. And this is why I said I've accomplished a lot this week. Um, even though, I, you know, looking at my pile, it seems small. I'm, I, I read this giant chunk of a book. So this is, I believe, the ninth book in the Wheel of Time series, and the reason this is getting 3.25 stars is we're following characters in this one that I don't really care about, because that's where I'm at, is this is a adult fantasy where we're kind of following a, a chosen one, and we don't really know how that's going to play out, but we get different POVs um, for characters all throughout the stories that are in some way related to the journey. And I have grown very attached to some characters and some characters I just can't stand. So these books are, I think, are going to be hit or miss depending on the POVs we get. And there was a storyline that I was really, really into in this one. And once we moved away from that and went to the other POVs, I didn't care as much. And so I think it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of the books play out because I'm invested enough in the characters I do care about to want to know how things turn out for them and to follow them on their journey. But for the ones that I don't, it's it can be a slog to get through their chapters. So um, this, this was not my favorite one in the series. But like I said, I'm still invested enough in the characters I do like to want to continue. And speaking of that, I've made progress in book 10, Crossroads of Twilight. And I'm on page 197. I was reading this on sprints last night and it started off with a character I don't like. And I struggled through that, but I got to one of the ones I did, and it looks like um, there's going to be several POVs of characters I do like based on the description. So I'm very excited about that, about um, getting back with some of the characters whose journey and story I'm into. So we're going to see how this one ends up turning out, but I did make some progress in this. Then I finished the Vandebeeker series by reading the Vandebeekers Ever After, and I give this five stars. So this series follows the Vandebeeker kids, and there are five of them. And they get into all sorts of mischief in pretty much every book. And in this one, their aunt is getting married and they're trying to plan her wedding when the family receives some bad news that kind of puts everything in flux. And we kind of see how they handle this unexpected thing that is happening to them. And this book emotionally wrecked me. I sobbed. It, it was such an easy five stars and I knew it was going to be five stars. I thought the way it ended was brilliant. It felt very true to the story. I'm going to miss being with these characters so much. Y'all have no idea how much I've grown attached to these kids and their family and all of their friends and the community they've built. I'm 
just blown away by the direction the story takes and how it manages to be so hard-hitting and emotional while also still having that current of love and joy that you see with this particular family. And I think that at the end of the day, what I really got out of this is the heart and the love this family has for each other and how they they demonstrate that throughout this entire series and definitely 100% in this book. So absolutely love the way this wrapped up. Very sad to see them go, but happy that I got to enjoy the journey with the Vandebeekers. And then the last book I finished is Isaiah Dunn Saves the Day. This is the second book in the Isaiah Dunn series, and I gave this 4.25 stars. So this follows a young boy who in the first book is dealing with the loss of his father and the way that is affecting his family. In this one, we're really focused on him being in middle grade, starting middle grade, and some of the challenges that he's facing. Now that he has moved on to middle grade, we're seeing some issues with friends. Um, there's a character he meets in this one that kind of rubs him the wrong way, and we see how he has to deal with that. And it's just a really interesting look at Isaiah growing up, and we're seeing the differences between the Isaiah we met in book one and where he is now, how he and his family are still missing their dad and how that is continuing to affect them because that's not something that just goes away. And I thought it was a really solid addition to the series. I really like how it played out and how we got to see Isaiah grow throughout this one because we do see a lot of growth from him. And it was just another really, really good book in the series. It was one that once I picked it up, I didn't want to put it down. The character that rubs Isaiah wrong rubs me wrong too, which is why it brought my rating down. But like, I understand why. And I understand some of the other threads that were pulled in. And like, I think, I think the reason it doesn't get a higher rating is because I wanted more. Because there's a lot of stuff going on and this is a shorter book. And I just, I think I just wanted more of some of the kind of side stories, not like Isaiah's main focus, but some of the things that were going on like over here that he mentions. And I hope that we're going to get more books in the series so we can kind of see some of those um, developed because I'm hoping that the idea is, is that we're, we're reading this book and we'll get a next book in the series and some of those side things will come to the forefront a little bit more. But I think this is a solid addition to the series. It's a solid series in general and I really enjoyed it. And then I started two other books. The first is Murders and Metaphors. This is the third book in the Magical Bookshop Mystery series. And this follows Violet who is tricked into coming back to a hometown that she hasn't been in in a very long time by her grandma Daisy. And she ends up finding that her family has magic and that their bookshop is magical. And her grandma in the first one ends up being a murder suspect, which is why she ends up staying. And in this one, she and her grandmother are hosting an event for an author and that author ends up dead. And the main suspect ends up being one of Violet's friends. So... It's going to be interesting to see how Violet manages to navigate this because there's already some stuff that has been thrown in her path that seems like it's going to make it very tricky. And I'm very, very curious to see how she manages to piece together what's going on and how the magical bookshop um, kind of influences that because she's already been um, given a book by the bookshop because that's one of the things it does is, is she'll be drawn towards certain books or they'll pop up in places they shouldn't be. And she's gotten this book and I'm very curious to see how this book ties into the story and what other books end up showing themselves and making themselves known to Violet throughout this one. So very interested in this. And then the other book I started is Dog Squad and I'm on page uh, 140. And this follows Fred who ends up losing his home. He's not living with a really great guy, but the guy throws him out. He ends up getting picked up by like the pound ends up there and ends up getting rescued by this woman who works on a TV show called The Dog Squad. And Duke, the main character of The Dog Squad, is an extremely famous dog. Fred looks up to him. And unfortunately, Duke is injured and Fred looks just like him. So now Fred is taking Duke's place and we're seeing his journey as he kind of fills in for Duke on The Dog Squad and maybe shows some of that heroics outside of a TV show. And this feels very three stars. Um, it, it's interesting enough that I'm going to stick with it because I want to see how it how it wraps up. And it could be a series I continue depending on how the rest of the series goes. 
but it's not one that necessarily connects with my sense of humor. Some things have happened that like I think were supposed to be funny but aren't necessarily hitting for me. But I could see why a middle grader would really enjoy this. And I definitely think it has some positives to it based on what I've read so far with like Fred and the journey he's kind of going through. So I'm definitely going to stick it through and and see this book to the end at the very least. But I'm not going to pretend that um, I'm not interested in the second book just based on the title because it mentions it on the back. It is Dog Squad 2 Cat Crew. And y'all know I love me some cats. So if this book is enjoyable, I might continue on and give the second one a shot just based on the title. But we'll see. Um, I will say I'm listening to the audiobook as I'm reading along and it's really, really cool because we've seen um, filming scenes. And when they're filming, they're, the vibe of the audiobook changes. And I think that's so incredibly cool how it makes those scenes feel unique and sets them apart and gives them a different tone because there's like music playing in the background and you feel like you're really seeing like a narrator talk as opposed to Fred, our main character. So I thought that was really, really cool. And I'm definitely invested in this series enough to at least finish this book. And like I said, probably read the second one unless something crazy goes on in this one. So that's my update. Um, it's, it's been a, it's been a week. That's for sure. Um, hasn't been the best brain week, but we're, we're getting through some of the bigger books on my TBR. Lots of Wheel of Time. I'm this close to be ready like, to move on from, from Wheel of Time. Hopefully I'll be able to get through book 10 rather quickly. And then I think I'm caught up. I might even be a little bit ahead of schedule, which would be nice because then that would give me a slight break. But we're going to see how it goes. And then the other big thing I did this week was I put up the announcement video for the June book club pick. I gave everybody four options, so I'm officially starting my book club in June. Hopefully y'all will join me. Um, I'll pop a link to the options up in the cards because this should be up before voting closes because um, that's open until midnight on the 16th and I'm hoping to get this up Tuesday or Wednesday. So you should still have a little bit of time to vote if you're watching this um, and it's before the 16th. And then on the 17th, I'm going to announce the winner and uh, we'll be able to chat about it in my Discord because we're all going to read the same book in June. And hopefully uh, all of you that join me will enjoy whatever book ends up winning. So we shall see. And yeah, it's, it's been an interesting week and hopefully I'll be able to get through the three books I'm in the midst of before Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. I'm a little off because of the final book support group. So it is it is through Tuesday. So We'll see how that goes, and yeah, I will check in with you probably around midnight on Tuesday or Tuesday morning when I get up to wrap this vlog up.
So it is officially the 14th, which means it is time to wrap this vlog up. I've had a very successful last few days and I managed to do everything I wanted to do and then some. So let's start with the and then some. I read Murders and Metaphors. This is the third book in the Magical Bookshop Mystery Series and I gave this four and a half stars. This follows Violet and she has come back home after being tricked there by her grandma Daisy who in the first book ends up getting accused of murder, which keeps Violet in town. And she soon finds out that the bookshop her grandmother owns is magical and she's about to be the next caretaker. In this one, she and her grandmother are hosting a signing for an old friend's sister. And when the sister ends up dead, Violet's old friend is the main suspect. So she starts digging into things because she knows her friend couldn't have done this. I really, really love this one, like a lot. It started off a smidge slow, which is why I got four and a half, but then it just picked up and I just loved everything about it. I was really invested in the mystery. I was really interested in how the bookshop and the books that it was bringing to Violet's attention were playing into the greater mystery because usually it's giving clues. And I thought that was really fascinating, her trying to put those pieces together. I never in a million years figured out the ending. I just was completely bamboozled. Although in hindsight, it makes sense. So it's it's a, a mystery that does indeed make sense afterwards. It just, I, it never occurred to me to suspect the person that ended up doing it until at the end when I went, oh, duh. Um, so I really enjoyed the mystery aspect of it and being snowballed. I love the relationships that are being built between Violet and the characters she meets and, and this community that she's forming around her. This is just such a really good, fun, cozy mystery series with a slight fantastical vibe. I really, really love it and I can't wait to continue on next month. Then I picked up another cozy mystery, If Walls Could Talk, and I gave this 4.25 stars. So this follows Mel and Mel is running her like dad's construction company. Her mom died and she was recently divorced. So she moved back in with her dad to kind of keep him company and deal with some grief um, from losing her mom and basically steps in to take over the construction company for her dad. She goes to visit a friend named Matt and while she's kind of looking at his older house because she does um, historic renovations, I believe. Yeah, historic houses. So she's really into uh, keeping the historic feel while kind of updating it. And she's looking at the house he has bought and while there, a former colleague shows up, gravely injured, and shortly after he passes, she's able to see his ghost. And, well, that's very unsettling for her, and she decides she does not like that, so she decides to dig into this uh, murder and see if she can't figure out what was going on with Kenneth in the hopes that it will leave her ghost free. I really love the... Uh, kind of um, almost HGTV feel to this because I watch some of those design shows with my mom. And so hearing her talk about the different historic features of the house and how to preserve them and stuff like that, I thought was really interesting. Like for me, it added to the story. I could see how some might not click with it, but it really clicked with me. I liked the ghostly aspect as well. And Mel trying to get a handle on what that meant and how she would be be able to get rid of Kenneth, this ghost who's now following her. I liked learning more about her life and her relationships because she's got quite an interesting mix of relationships that we see in this book in particular. I'm very interested in seeing where this series goes, seeing what other kinds of historic houses or buildings she renovates and what other kinds of ghosts she ends up attracting because I think we're going to see them more. I would also like to see if some of the characters she met in this one pop back up in future books because it felt like there were a few we might we might be seeing more of and I would be interested in getting to know them better. So I very much thought this was a really solid start to the series. It kept me engaged. I had to force myself to put it down. So very solid start. Can't wait to see where it goes. Then I finished this book, Crossroads of Twilight, and I gave this three and a half stars. So this is the 10th book in the Wheel of Time series, and I've been slowly making my way through it. It's not my favorite. I've heard from others that have read it that um, Wheel of Time kind of starts off like this. 
and then you go into a slight lull and then it picks back up. And I feel like I might be in the lull because this is the second book that I've really like had to kind of slog through. I believe I've said in previous clips um, about the series that there are POVs I really enjoy and POVs I don't. And I definitely got some of the POVs I like in this one, but like I wanted more movement of the story and it felt like we're a little stalled out in some ways. So I'm hoping that it'll pick back up soon because I feel like we're just kind of plodding along right now. Although, like I said, I'm still really invested in the characters I care about and I want to know where their journey ends, even if there are characters I have to sit through to get to the parts that I care about because those things could be relevant to things that are happening to the characters I do care about, if that makes sense. It's really, really hard to talk about uh, book 10 and a giant chunky fantasy series with a bajillion characters. So um, ho hopefully I kind of uh, explained it well enough that you understand where I'm coming from, at least in the mindset of why I'm feeling the way I am. And if you've read it, um, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about with the kind of in this in this one feeling like is something going to happen? Like, are, are we going to go somewhere with some of this? So um, still enjoying the series, but hope, hoping it picks up relatively soon. Then I finished Sweep, the story of a girl and her monster. And I've been reading this since April. So this follows a girl named Nan and she's a chimney sweep. And one day she gets stuck in a chimney, but gets rescued by this char so this like little piece of soot and ash that she's been carrying around and it turns into this golem and she's got to figure out what to do with him and how to survive together in this world who's probably not going to take well to her new friend. So I gave this 3.75 stars and I was surprised that it got that high but I ended up reading the rest of this on sprints. Today was a very successful sprint day. I finished Crossroads, Twilight, Sweep and another book that I'm going to get to in a second and it, it got me back into it. So I started reading this in April and I put it down and it wasn't that I wasn't enjoying when, when I was reading it because I was, but I wasn't enjoying it enough that once I set it down, I, I wanted to pick it back up so I could see it sitting there, but I didn't necessarily feel drawn towards picking it back up. And today I did and I got through it using my sprints and I'm glad I did because I ended up really enjoying it. But I don't think I can give it higher than a 3.75 stars because it didn't keep me engaged enough to want to pick it up. I needed that kind of little extra oomph. I really like seeing Nan and the Golem's relationship develop. I thought that was quite interesting seeing how easily she took to this crazy thing that was happening to her. As not everybody would um, suddenly deal well with a living, breathing Golem being in their presence. I thought it was interesting learning more about sweep culture because this is... A historical fiction and it definitely captures the times when it comes to what was really going on with sweeps and what that life was like because um i in the author's note the author mentions that the only chimney sweeps they knew of at one point were the ones from mary poppins and it didn't look that miserable to be a chimney sweep and i i can relate the only thing i knew about chimney sweeps was exactly what he said the ones from mary poppins and they looked extremely happy. I mean, who doesn't love a good step in time? And <laughs> he went and learned about what it was really like and how horrific it was for these kids who um, had to, you know, sweep chimneys back in the day. And I thought that was quite interesting. And I really like how he brought that to life and made it feel really severe and important and added that gravity to it while still keeping some lighthearted stuff and some emotional aspects of like friendship and you know this this carving out of this life that Nan and her column try to do so I really enjoyed it when I did read it but it gets a lower rating because without that extra oomph I don't know that I would have picked it back up because it would have very easily been the type of book I could have softy enough as out of sight out of mind so it just, it didn't engage me the way I was hoping it would. And then the last book I finished also got 3.75 stars, and that's Dog Squad. So this follows a dog named Fred, who gets thrown out of his house, gets picked up by, like, animal control, and ends up getting adopted by this crew who is working on the show Dog Squad, mainly because he resembles the main dog in the show Duke. 
and Duke had hurt his leg and they kind of need a stand in for Duke. So Fred is going to supply that until Duke is back on his paws, so to speak. And along the way, he has to decide whether he wants to continue being the kind of um, down on his luck, timid dog, or whether he wants to live up to the ideals he's seen on the TV show Dog Squad and maybe be a bit of a hero himself. And we, we see him adjust to this new life. We see him meet tons of other dogs and they are all very distinct characters. The audiobook is absolutely fantastic. I would highly recommend it if you can get access to it because each of the dogs has its own voice which helps to give it a distinct personality and we see scenes that they're filming for the TV show Dog Squad and those have a completely different vibe to them than the regular scenes where we're just kind of following Fred around and I thought that, that was such a cool way of doing it and bringing those scenes to life and making them feel different than the rest of the book. So if you were listening to the audiobook you knew and you didn't have like the physical book because it is um like here we'll uh ooh that's perfect because you can see do you see how the fonts are different so they even changed fonts in the physical book so like i like how they made that distinction in the audiobook so i thought that was really really cool um i was not expecting to give this 3.75 stars but the way Everything came together in the end and how this story tied up had me uh, chuckling and grinning and absolutely made me want to pick up book two, which I had already considered because it's called Cat Crew. And if you know me, you know I love cats. So I had already wanted to kind of pick it up, but now I want to pick it up even more because of the way this ended and some of the humor that happened at the end and the choices the characters made at the end that I really, really enjoyed. So um, I ended up enjoying this a lot more than I thought I would, so very pleasantly surprised and really glad that I stuck with it because there was a point in the beginning where I was like, I don't know if this book is going to be with be, like be for me, and I kind of contemplated DNFing it, but I'm glad I didn't because I ended up really enjoying it. So that was my week. I got everything accomplished I wanted to, which was basically to end the week with no reads currently in like progress. So I did that. Um, it's been a very long week. Um, some ups and downs, not the best brain week, some not great news that I've gotten that's really kind of thrown my head for a loop and I have to kind of try to deal with that. But it's been nice to escape into some books and especially today because I got some not so great news today and being on sprints with everybody and getting to escape into the world of books was exactly what I needed. So very happy with everything I accomplished this week. But that's going to be it for this vlog. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me sunglasses emojis in honor of the sunglasses on the dog squad. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!